In this video, we're going to take a look at the transform tools that are available to us in Photoshop. And you'll locate these tools under Edit. And you'll see in this section here, we have Content Aware Scale, Perspective Warp, Free Transform, and so on. The first one we want to look at is Content Aware Scale. This is a newer tool that's available in Photoshop. You'll notice right now it's not active, and that's because you can't apply it to just a background layer. So the very first thing we need to do is actually make a copy of the background. And to do that, I'm going to left mouse click and just drag it down to the little box right next to the trash can, which is Layer Duplicate. And now I have an exact copy of my background. So if I come back up to Edit, you'll notice that Content Aware Scale is now active. And the primary purpose of content aware scale is to maintain the overall integrity of the image while allowing you to scale it unevenly in a certain direction. In this case, I'm going to scale it from the left. We're just going to scale it horizontally and leave the height as is. And something pretty magical happens as I start to scale from the left. You'll notice that the integrity of the windmill is remaining pretty much intact but the program is automatically removing space from where the barn is and in the sky and you also notice the same in the trees as well and so as I continue to scale this over it's just taking bits and pieces out of the original image and averaging it so that it still blends together well and so right now I'm up to two and a half inches that I've already scaled this image and you'll notice that while the windmill is shifted a little further to the right, it's still pretty much intact, and the program is preserving that as well. Same with this area of the tree line. So the program is very aware from a content perspective and chooses on its own where to remove information to maintain the overall integrity of the photo. So if I hit Enter to apply this, and we compare it to the original, you'll notice that the windmill is nearly 100% intact. It's still a very attractive image. It's just that it reduced the size of the barn and the size of the trees primarily over here on the right. Now there's a tiny little bit of artifacting right here at the top of the barn, but that could be easily smoothed out using the clone stamp or even a blur tool. So it's a very powerful tool. It's somewhat specialized. It really depends on the type of images that you're scaling, in other words, you likely wouldn't want to use it on people, but landscapes, architecture even, those types of photographs, it's perfectly suited for. Now the next tool that we're going to take a look at is also in this area, and it's called Perspective Warp. And the primary purpose of Perspective Warp is to straighten photographs that have angles in the architecture or in the landscape due to wide angle shots. If you're using a wide angle lens on your camera, whether it's a point and shoot, your smartphone, or digital SLR, and you aim up toward the top of a building like you see here, the lens tends to distort the angle of the building so it doesn't maintain it perfectly vertical as you see here. It's actually angled from the bottom to the top facing toward the right. The tool that we're going to look at here, Perspective Warp, actually allows you to fix that in a very specific way. So whenever I select that tool, and you notice in this case I didn't have to make a copy of the background, although I could have, but the first thing I'm going to do is click over here on this part of the building and it creates a mesh. And I'm just going to drag the points of this mesh so that it lines up evenly with this face of the building. And actually I'm going to go over to this corner edge here like so. Next thing I'm going to do is create a secondary mesh. I'm going to click again and I'm going to join it to this one. And you notice as I'm getting close to the corner they highlight in blue which means it'll auto snap. Okay, And then I'm going to position the mesh so that it proportionally corresponds to the building here. Now we're not affecting the courthouse in this particular building. I'm just primarily interested in straightening this building right now. And you'll notice on the right here, this building is also angled in. We could come back and fix that as well. 
So once we have our meshes in place to mirror the approximate perspective of this office building here, I'm going to come up to the top and right now layout is selected and I'm going to click on warp. Okay. When I click on warp, it gives me the ability to begin shifting the mesh so that I can actually straighten this building and just adjust it accordingly. And you don't have to go overboard with it. You can just adjust it a little bit. But let's say that I find that that's satisfactory. I hit enter. And if we come up here to history and you compare the two, this is before and this is after. So now you can see that the distortion that was created from the wide angle lens is now gone. Now, of course, to make up that difference, it also uh, warped the edge of the picture. But you could either crop the picture or fill this in using some clone stamping just to make up this difference. Okay? But it's a very easy way to straighten especially architecture and certain kinds of landscapes if you have tall trees and they're angling in because of a wide angle lens this is the perfect tool perspective warp in order to fix those images now next in the transform we're going to look at the free transform tool and I'm going to take the cartoon that we have here of Dexter and I'm going to move it into this photograph and so he's actually here in the corner okay and let's say that I want the building and everything to scale down just a little bit if I come up to edit free transform this gives me the ability to scale disproportionately I can scale up and down this way horizontally and vertically if I hold the shift key down it will lock the proportion but if I right mouse click, you'll notice that I have access to all the other points. Right now I'm using free transform. Okay. But I also have the ability to choose rotate so that I could rotate the image if I wanted to. I can skew the image. Okay. Which basically just angles the image on uh, either a horizontal or a vertical line. I can choose perspective, which you'll notice that both sides are angling in, depending on which angle that I'm choosing. And I can also even choose warp. So that gives me the ability to actually expand some of the areas of the image by clicking on the center points. So you have uh, some definite control there over how it works. And you notice that you have the Bezier curve handles, and those are what you're using to actually shift this image. So I'm going to hit Escape to, to get out of that. And actually, I'm going to work with a copy. And let's just come back here to Transform. We went through these basic tools, but let's look at Scale again. And I'm going to scale this down. And let me zoom in here so we can see this a little bit better. So we have this scale. We have our guy here. I'm going to set him over here on the street. He's kind of going, hmm. Right? And I can actually use the same transform on him as well. Again, you'll notice if I choose free transform, I literally have the ability to change any of these. And I have instant access just by right mouse clicking. But let's say that I want to reposition him, like instead of having him as is, let's say that I want him facing the other direction. Well, we have a flip horizontal and flip vertical. If I choose flip horizontal, it instantly flips him. So I could move him over here like this, put him in the middle of the road. Now he's facing toward the courthouse here. I can also take a look at maybe just, let's see. We have the ability to rotate 180 degrees, 90 degrees clockwise, 90 degrees counterclockwise. In this case, we have no need to rotate, but these are set standards because people use them a lot. If you need to just rotate freely, you can choose that, and you can just rotate to whatever angle you need. And you'll notice that degree angle that you're rotating is also being shown on the screen. You'll also notice that it's being shown up here.
in the top toolbar area, which is important. Another distinction is that if you hold the shift key down, it will rotate it in increments of 15 degrees. The same is true with scale. If I choose edit, transform scale, you'll notice that I can scale him freely or I can hold the shift key down and he'll scale proportionately. And you'll notice that the width and the height percentages are also up here. You can lock them by clicking the little chain. And that way, however I scale, it's always going to scale proportionately. So you have a lot of control both here and in the top toolbar as well. And again, I can right mouse click and choose distort. And so now I'm going to unlock the width and the height. With distort, I can just take one corner and scale him that way, and the other three corners remain intact. So those are the transform tools. They're very powerful. You can use them in multiple settings, and you're going to find yourself using them in a lot of different scenarios. And as we go through these videos and get into some of the case studies, we're going to be using them as well in different scenarios. So you want to watch for those and really familiarize yourself with them.